that we are experiencing uh, typhoon and flooding. We did quite well. Uh, from the ticket sales, we got 51,000 pesos. Congratulations. And thank you so much to all of you who braved the floods to come here tonight. Salamat. Okay, I would like to thank the other sponsors. Uh, isang idol ko na taga Ayana Heights na talagang mahal na mahal ko. Nandito siya ngayong gabi. Ang mother-in-law ni Joey Hodloman, na kapatid ni Jesse. Mrs. Chi Fragada. Let's all give her a big round of applause. Pang kayo naman kayo. There she is, a big round of applause. She's one of our sponsors. And of course, we also have Annie G, uh, Pastor and Mrs. Ed Reyes. Of course. Oh, is this a group of Ed? Nasaan si Ed? Janet, a big round of applause for Janet. She has been all 
also helping all of us organize this uh, fundraising tonight. Thank you, Dor. Okay, first of all, I'd like to thank, first and foremost, God, for bringing everyone here. And I know that you know how much we've gone through, especially to Jesse. And I think even before I tell you how he is now, I think it's important for you to know what happened so you can appreciate how he is now. Okay, so, siguro, I can start with the day na inataki siya, that was May 30. I actually got um, a text message in the morning from my sister-in-law, yeah, sister-in-law, sister in Jesse, who is married to Jay, who happens to be a pastor. So, sabi niya, they were praying down, and they were, parang she was, asking for guidance kung paano siya mag-pray, kung sino yung pag-pray niya. And then, pumasok sa isip niya kami. Me and my husband, Jesse. And then, usually when she asks for guidance, she opens the Bible, and um, she she gets a passage from the Bible, and that's the message for her. So, nung inopen niya yung yung Bible, ang message was actually about Lazarus. I'm sure you know the story of Lazarus who was risen from the dead. Okay. And then another verse that came to her was from Ezekiel 37, which is about dead bones. Yung dead bones, yung took sa ni Lord, si Ezekiel, to prophesy to the dead bones so that the bones will live. First, like a long flesh, like a long tendons, and then like a long breath. So she texted me and said, I know, I'm weird. She said, I'm kind of morbid because it's about death. I was praying about you, I was praying for you and Jesse, and this is the message that got to me. And it's about death, I don't know, but I think this is for you. And I think you need to read the Bible and you need to read the message to Jesse. You have to speak it out loud, she said. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, okay, so anyway, Sabi ko, alam mo talaga, ang basahan ko na Jesse, baka sabihin sa akin, ang ginagawa ko. Alam mo, basahin ko yung bahay ko sa akin, ang problem sa akin ko, sabi ko, baka magtawanan ako nun. Anyway, so, I didn't read it first. So, I I waited until he left. When he left, that's when I opened the Bible, and then I saw the message. I started with with Ezekiel, kasi sabi ko, alam mo na yung story ni Lazarus. Ayaw ko lang basahin, kasi ito po sa akin. Anyway, so, minasa ko yung Ezekiel, and I was reading it, and I started reading it out loud. I was looking at the picture of, of the family, ako, my daughter, and I'm Jesse. And it came to me, parang aklaro, parang, it's, it's about Jesse. And, you know, for a split second, I realized it really was telling me what's going to happen. And, and, uh, Parang, I just accepted the fact that something is going to happen with Jesse and it's going to be similar to death. That was the morning of, I think, May 30 or May 31, if I'm not mistaken. So anyway, uh, May 30. That night, may gig siya with, yun nga, sila Steven, uh, the Verve Project, Sam, and the pen. And before he left, Sabi pa na, text, text daw, okay, text, text. But around 11 p.m., hindi ko siya nagtitext. Usually, nagtitext ako, hindi ko mag-text yun. But, you know, I texted him and said, how come you're not texting? Text mo ako, oh, wait, nakaagad, something like that. And after five minutes of texting, nag-tumawag na sa akin si Stephen, Stephen Mora, Verve. And then he said that, you know, we brought Jess to the hospital, um, he can't breathe, and the, the nurse took him there, the van of... Manila Pen took him there. So sabi ko, bakit? Ano pangyari? So he can't breathe. Okay, so who's with him? So Joseph Tao, yung saxophone player. Okay. So I asked for the Joseph's phone. That was around 11 p.m. And I just had an operation two days prior to that. Pakakalabas ko lang ng hospital. So, hindi pa lang makalakad masyado. Pinanggalan ako ng gawag ladder. Tapos, so sabi ko, I called my sister, no? Sabi ko, Jen, hindi na nito si Jesse sa hospital. We need to go. We need to go see him, but I can't go. I don't have a car. It's middle, middle of the night. So sabi ko, tawagan na uh, tawag ba yung mga kapatid mo? Let's, let's go and see him. Tinawagan ko si Joseph, who is with him. And when I called him, hindi siya makasagot. Sabi ko, kumusta na? Ano nangyari kay Jesse? 
Sabi niya, ah, ma'am, kasi ano po? Hindi siya makasigot sa akin. Bakit? Ano yung niyari? Kinukuryente po siya. Ha? Kinukuryente. So, can you just imagine, you, you know, talking to somebody who is with your husband and telling you that your husband is being what? Hindi naman yun yung laptop yun. <laughs> na kinukuryente, binubuhay. So, yung, yung nakikita niyo sa TV na ginaganon, no? So, siyempre, kung ano na naisip ko, why? Why will he need that? So, umiyak na ako, tapos I waited for Grace, my sister, to pick me up when I got there. He was okay, he was away, he was already awake, he was conscious. Pero sabi ng doctors, ano daw, kailangan niyo makonfine sa ICU. Medyo nung una, parang ano pa ako, ah, okay, fine. Lipat namin siya sa heart center. But unfortunately, waitlist kami sa heart center, hindi kami malilipat. Tawag kami sa ibang hospital kasi alam ko mahal sa mga hardware. Wala kaming pera, wala kaming kilala doon. Um, you know, again, I just had an operation, so wala. And then finally, after several tries, after calling several uh, hospitals, wala talaga kaming mabuntahan. In the first place, ayaw siyang payagan umalis ng Makati Med kasi 50-50 pala siya. Hindi nila sinasabi sa amin. So, we decided, sabi ng sister niya, mukhang ayaw tayo paalis eh. We decided to yung allow him to be confined in Makati Med. True enough, kung tinravel pala namin siya, baka namatay siya. Kasi when we got to the ICU or the fourth floor, that was just a few minutes after, tinatake siya ng sunod-sunod. About, I think, three, four, five times. Tapos, nire-revive na siya. He was clinically dead. Flatline. Okay? And we were all in the other room. We were crying and I was praying. And then I remembered the verse. I remembered Ezekiel 37. So, this verse came to me even before this happened. I didn't ask for it. I didn't pray about it. I didn't ask Lilith to send me any verse. I just got it. It was sent to me. And I think it was, you know, it was a message telling me to just, you know, relax. Because this will come to pass and the end will be that. He will be in life. He will be messed with me. So, very clear yung message. So, as I was praying, ang yung prayer ko, parang ano, parang nanunumbat ang kay God sa Lord. Ikaw muna, sabi mo eh. Hindi ko na hinihingi ito eh. Sinabi mo eh. So, ayan, naniniwala ako sa'yo. Sabi ko, so, please, you know, just be true to your word. I'm trusting your word. And I'm, you know, holding on to that. So, that's my prayer. And, you know, when I prayed that, I was, parang nawala yung fear. And I was like, it was, quite peaceful, I think, for lack of a better term. So, because when they came to the doctors, they said, I need to make a decision now, because in 50-50, his heart, actually, the heart beat got to 270 beats per minute. The normal is 60 to 90. So, imagine, 270. So, Sobrang pagod na pagod na yung puso niya. Tuloy-tuloy yung, ano, instead of beating, instead of pumping blood this way, it was actually already shaking. Kaya 270. And then, so that's why it had to administer shock. And then, sabi nila, if we don't address it right away, we don't know how, kasi hindi namin alam kung nandiparehan siya. Suspect namin may para, but we need to know. So, kailangan siya i-angiogram. If we don't do an angiogram, his heart will just stop, and that's it. If we do an angiogram, 50-50, because we can do an angiogram, tapos bilang mag-aatakigin siya, so it's going to be very dangerous. Sabi ko, if it's both 50-50, then go ahead, do the angiogram, I'll sign. So, kumilang ako, and then sabi nila, pag may nakita ko para, diretso angioplasty, kinabi na ko, ano yung kakabirba, ano yung kakabirba. Okay, anyway, so, dinala siya, in angiogram, in less than 30 minutes, they came out and they said, good news, bad news. Good news is walang para, bad news because may para mas madaling address, madaling, you know, gadgetlasty. Uh, the bad news is the heart itself is already very weak, it's enlarged. Um, it doesn't function 100% anymore, the function is just 20%. So instead of beating and pumping blood to the other parts of the body na 100%, ang, ang pump niya, Ganun, ganun lang na, parang pitik-pitik lang. That's why nagigino siya, hindi nakaka-receive ng enough oxygen yung other parts of the body. And, you know, good thing is, nagre-respond naman siya dun sa mga medicine. 
So, ang dami ng tubo may tubo sa bibig, meron siyang respirator, may mas, ano, may naka-respirator siya, meron siyang tubo sa ilong, meron siyang uh, the very famous catheter, <laughs> meron siyang uh, temporary face maker that was inserted through his vein, he's amazing, and uh, he had several uh, IVs, and then, um, sa malaki na pa-attach. Parang pinakyaw niya lahat ng machine sa ICU, kaya mahal niya. Ay, pinakyaw niya lahat. Anyway, so, yun, um, slowly, sabi niya, um, hopefully mag-respond sa medicine yung heart, otherwise it's just going to stop. So, sabi pati ng isang doctor, nag, nag, ano rin eh, nag-congest yung lungs niya. And uh, I think um, one of the doctors, yung sa lang, sabi niya, um, give it two to three days, and then let's just pray for a miracle. Ganun na talaga, parang, ano, parang, hopeless, parang ganun. But, you know, we kept praying. Ang mga prayer writers ko sila, Lile, yung sister niya, si Grace, and everyone else, our friends, uh, family, have been praying, and we were all praying, and we were all just trusting in the, the word that was sent to me, that this is going to be a resurrection. And true enough, you know, the day after they said na to wait two to three days and let's pray for a miracle, in less than 24 hours, no one had congestion, 100% and clear your lungs, yeah. And then, in a couple of days, pinanggal na siya sa respirator. And then, uh, yun nga, he needed a def defibrillator, so it's not a pacemaker, it actually um, supplies electric shock sa heart niya, so every time na maa-attacke siya, instead of bringing him to the hospital because it might be too late para ka-shock yung heart niya, bumalik sa dating beat, meron siyang built-in electric shock sa, sa dibdib. So it's going to, it's supposed to take care of that. But the thing is, no Wednesday, when they implanted the defibrillator, sabi sa amin, one hour lang yung, ano, yung, yung process. Uh, so we waited, but relax, relax pa kami, kumain pa kami sa baba. <laughs> Sabi nila, ano lang daw yun, minor operation. It's not even an operation, it's just an, a procedure. And then, so he went into the pack room around 2.30 to 45. So sabi nila, so about 4 na tapas na. 4.30, wala pa. 5, wala pa. 5.30, wala pa. 6, wala pa. So, nagpapalay na kami nila rin. Hindi ko na pa. He said, the doctor said, once they've implanted it, they need to uh, test it, to test that the different relator is going to work. And to do that, they need to induce the attack. So, I to induce yung attack so they can test if the different relator will actually deliver the electric shock. So, sa iba pasyente daw, in their 20 years of experience, a different relator, it only takes one test. And everything's okay, so wrap up, na tapos na the procedure. In Jess's case, they actually did 10 trials. Okay, 10 times siyang pinindused. 10 times nag-work ang defibrillator. Pero hindi nag-stop yung heart attack. Hindi na-arrest. Hindi na-kaya ng defibrillator. So, even the suppliers, the distributors of the defibrillator in South in Asia, they were there to witness the operation. Sabi nila, it's the first time, and it's, uh, it's the most difficult, it's the most, it's a unique case. It's a unique talaga si Jess, a special child kasi yun. Special case. So, pati yung heart niya special case din. So, on the last try of the 10th, sabi ng mga doktor, this is not going to work, we need to talk to the family niya. We're giving up. This is the last try. Wala na kaming magagawa. Defibrillator na to. Ito na yung pinaka-help na magagawa namin. If it, it doesn't work, then that's it. Tapos sabi nung, nung doctors, nag-pray daw sila nung sa room, lahat daw ng mga nurses. Please, Lord, please, Lord, make it work, make it work. Tapos na lahat daw sila pinagpapawisan na. So, okay, ready, everyone, let's pray. Ganyan. Sabi ng doktor, kinikwento sa amin. Tapos on the last try, it worked. Yung 10th try. In fact, of the 10th try, 7 of those, tinulungan pa nila ng external defibrillator para magbuhay ulit si JC. And on the 10th, the work, yung highest setting ng defibrillator work. So they came out of the tap room, they talked to me, they talked to the sisters, and told us, 
post na commission ka to, so baka nang pala kang anesthesiologist na matanda. Sabi niya, pinahirapan kami ng asawa mo. This is the most difficult operation, the most difficult procedure that we've done. But they were all very, parang sila mismo na surprise. In fact, when the doctor talked to Jesse, sabi niya, you know, even I cannot explain what happened to you. Tapos yung isang doctor, si Dr. King from Singapore, who flew in all the way from Singapore to witness the operation, sabi niya, kay Jesse, pinahirapan mo ko. Oh, sabi niya, siya, yung, siya yata yung pinaka-parang head doctor nila. Sabi niya, alam mo, because what happened to you, you should be a saint. Kasi nag-resurrect na several times. <laughs> oh, sabi niya sa niya. Anyway, so, yun, um, in, in God's grace and mercy, um, nalagyan na siya ng defibrillator. Initially, the quote was 1.2M for just the defibrillator. Wala pa dun yung hospital expenses. Wala pa dun yung doctor's fees. It's just the defibrillator. 1.2. Pati yung doktor namin, tumawat <laughs> sa supplier. Nakatawat na lang siya. Binigil sa amin na almost 900K. So, nakatawat kami ng ilang 100,000. And then, of course, you know, it's already there. It's hopefully it's going to function well. The heart is still at twenty percent function, so hindi pa niya bumabale. He's going to need a lot of support and help from your, from his friends, from our friends, not just financially. Financially, I guess a lot of you being here, you're already helping us. Um, you know, I cannot thank you. I don't know how to thank you for especially the artists who have volunteered to do this for free, not just once, but I think it's going to be three times, especially Siti, um, Audrey, Si Aisaku, thank you for the video. Um, of course, Dot, who helped us organize uh, the event. All our friends, all our family. I think, you know what, the message really for me Nung nasa church ako, Pastor Ed, di ba pinagunta niyo kami sa harapan? And I was crying, but but there were people behind me crying. And what's beautiful about it is that I wasn't praying for myself. I was praying for them, for the people who were there in front. Because in my mind and in my heart, I know God already did the, the miracle for us. Jesse is alive. I have all of you supporting us. You know, it's done. Sinabi na yun. Sinabi na yun sa NPL. I've done it. And it was so peaceful and I was just praying for everyone behind me and beside me for them to experience the same thing. To have the same trust. And to have the same faith. And to know exactly who to trust in situations like, you know, what I went through. And I think this is also a message for everyone here. God has touched you, not because you wanted to give, not because Jesse is a good friend, not because you want to be recognized, but I think because God wants to, wants you to know that there is a God. And if this happens to you, there is someone up there who is taking care of things for you. When I went to the hospital, and even until now, I only have 1,000 pesos in, in, in my bank account. Kasi kakatapos lang ng enrollment. As in, wala talaga. And again, I have an operation, so talagang simot. And, you know, the bill on the second day was already 500,000. And today, it's like 2 point something. But, but I'm surprised because I was looking at the bill. Nakapag-down na pala kami ng 770,000 plus. And I don't even know how that happened because I only have 1,000 that came in. So really, God is really working for me, for all of us, not just for, for the family, but for all of you. And I think this is going to be a blessing for you as well. It's not going to be probably a financial blessing, but I think it's more of a realization that, you know, if, if you just pray and you just trust and if you, you know, you know, you just be still, He's going to work in your lives. Okay? And I think Jesse is going to be used after this. Sabi mo sa kanya, pati ikaw, hindi ka na. <laughs> Kailangan, di ba? Kailangan magpayad ka dun sa taas. Maybe because you cannot pay, repay all of you. 
I don't think that's possible. At least not, you know, monetary value, but as I said, I don't even know how to start thanking you, but I think God is going to repay you all in ways that you cannot imagine. Because God has been helping us. I'm not worthy. Jesse is not worthy. Okay, none of us is worthy, I guess, but, you know, he's been very good to us. The fact that Jesse is alive, the fact that you're all here, despite the rain, okay, and the fact that there's another show on the 30th, and the fact that there are more artists who are actually volunteering, hindi ko sila kilala, hindi nila kilala si Jesse, wala, wala kami kilala doon sa iba, yung iba ang kilala namin, but, you know, uh, a lot of people volunteer, pati nga si Jackie Magno, kilala niyo, pero, ay, hindi niya ako kilala pala, pero kilala ko siya, marami may, parang, ha, si Jackie Magno? Okay. So, marami nag-volunteer just to help. And I think, you know, if you spread the news, if you spread the fact that, you know, helping people is not something that you do for yourself, you will be called by God to do it. And if you responded to it, I think the miracle happened to you as well, not just to us. And the fact that you responded to it, you're all miracles to you. Thank you very much. And we're still waiting for more miracles because Jesse is already walking. He is eating by himself. Nagpunta na sa restroom. And as usual, umabang pa na. Yung joke-joke na. Nagkahanap pa ng mas malayong restroom. Wala daw ba mas malayong restroom doon? He lost a lot of weight. Sabi ko nga parang magkatimbang na lang kami. After this, he's going to need a lot of support from you. He can still go back to his usual life, his job. But he can't go near speakers anymore. He has to be away from speakers kasi mawawala yung setting ng kanyang defibrillator. He can't use the cell phone on the left side. He can only use the cell phone on the right side. I'm telling you this because when you're with him, you also need to avoid using the cell phone uh, when you're on his left side. So that's why he put on the right side. Madam um, Bawal, definitely smoking. Lahat ng bawal sa katawan. Definitely. And I think this is also why things are happening on Mrs. Garillo. Ayan na, okay. So, hi, sabi ni Jessie. Ayan, nung joke-joke siya, sabi niya, nung daw, nung pag nag-aawal siya, pag galit siya sa isang tao, minumura niya. Ngayon daw, hindi na niya mumurahin. Sasabihin na lang daw niya, makatiter ka sana. And I think, you know, he experienced a lot of pain. And I hope it's, you know, it's something that he will remember, but something I guess that he, he is already learning from. And something that's going to be life changing, not just for him, but for all of us. Okay, so spread the news. There is life, there is a God. And uh, he should be out of the hospital. Pinakalayas na kami ng hospital, actually. Pwede na siyang lumabas. Problema lang, we need to pay at least one, at least 80% of the bill. And lumapit na ako sa PCSO. Ayan, nandito yung mga ka-office mates ko. Dahil na-develop, may nag-loan na ako. Okay. Pwede na siya lumabas since two days ago. Pwede na. We're just raising the money. So with your help, I think we should be able to do that. And if we can, we will be able to do that sooner, the better. Kasi while we're there, nagpapayap pa rin yung bills. So we just need to bring him out of the hospital. I think the rest will follow. Ako, I'm giving it all up to him. Okay, so thank you very much. God bless you all.